Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do Advent of Code Day 15 and I've been waiting for it and it has released so let's just jump right into it. So day 15. Siton. Uh, you are almost reached the exit of the cave, but the walls are getting closer together. Your submarine can barely fit the still fit through. The main problem is that the walls of the cave are covered with setons. It would not uh, be best not to bump any of them. The covered, uh, cavern is large, but a very low ceiling, uh, restricting your motion to two dimensions. The shape of the cavern resembles a square. A quick scan of the Seton density produces a map of a risk level through the cave, your puzzle input. For example, your start position is in the top left position. Your destination is in the bottom right position. You cannot move diagonally and the number at each position is its risk level. To determine the total risk of entire path, add up a risk level of each position you enter. That is, don't count the risk level of your starting position unless you enter it. Leaving it adds no risk for your total. Your goal is to find a path with the lowest total risk. In this example, a path with the lowest total risk is highlighted here. The risk of this path is 40. The starting position is never entered, so its risk is not counted. What is the lowest total risk of any path from the top left to the bottom right? Hmm, okay. And we are back again. And I realized that in the last video, I didn't do a great job of actually showing <laughs> what the uh, uh, thing I did was because I had the wrong screen up. So I will go through the full code again and show you everything. So first off, we uh, are gonna go in here and I already solved the first one. And that was just by creating a path from the uh, upper uh, left hand corner to the lower le uh, left hand corner and the result was 410. We're gonna go through that little function that I created in order to do that. The second one is that we need to create something that is five times five times five tiles larger, so 25 times larger, and then find a path through that. Uh, so if we go over to my code here, I first off have a result, 2816. So let's put that in and see if that's the right one. No, the answer is too high. Okay, um, that's interesting. I was pretty sure that I had the right one. And uh, so let's go through here and see what we did. So first off, I had this uh, little function up here, shortest path, where I go through each path and find if what's the shortest path from this point on. And if I find a path that is uh, too long, I will, uh, or if I find the shortest path, I will just return that value if I already have found it. So I have a point class where I put, uh, keep the lowest value and then the point value for this specific point and then I go down uh, to find the lowest value um, and set the lowest value. So it, that's pretty much just the only thing I have there is a container. And if I already found the lowest value, I will return that. Otherwise I will get this specific point value. I will check if I am at the bottom part, then I will just return that and set the lowest value for that. Else, if I am at any of the uh, corners of the map, so at max x or max y, I will only go down or left, uh, depend independent on which uh, edge I am at, else I will find the shortest path of both uh, left and uh, right and down. 
and then I will get the math min of that value and set that as a lowest value and get that lowest value and return that. So this will be a recursive function that will check all the values to the right and down from where I am. Um, so here I go and fill in the full map and I will do this function here where I write to the map. Uh, all the parsed integers. I have this little function here where I print out the full map. Um, uh, all, all the values in the full map. And then I have this function here where I go into and find the shortest path and return the minimum path. Writing the value is just going through each point from y to y5, yxx to x5, so five times extra. And I will go in here, find the value that uh, is both this value and plus plus these. And if this value is larger than nine, then I will decrease nine. So I will get one every time. Um, so if it's 10, it will become one. And I will do that until it's, uh, it's done pretty much. Uh, and then I will go through here and check the y, y position, y plus y times max y. So that's the, um, the place I want to find. So first off, I want to have this line, but I also want to have it uh, times the current tile that I want to print, and then times uh, five here, the x, max x times five, and then down here I will do x plus x uh, max x. So this is just to print which the x position in this specific tile. And then I will put my point value there. So this is to print the specific map. And then I have a fun function here to show the map that I have printed. So let's see if I can see this map and see if I can find any things that are strange with this map. Uh, it's a huge map um, because it's 100 times 100 values so it's really hard to actually debug and we are back and I think I solved it this was one of those cases where you get re really worked up with one solution and you tried 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 and didn't solve it at all went to bed in bed, I realized, no, you need to do like this. And went up, <laughs> coded it out, ran it, got a solution that is much more reasonable. So let's try that out. Hopefully this will be the one. Yes, you get a gold star. I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. So what did I do here? Well, what I had before was this function where I recursively tried to find the shortest path. That's no good. The new solution was actually to read everything in and write the map. So I created this large map and I created an extended map uh, using the 5x. And when I had this full map, with a bunch of points in this map. I saved the x and y value for this specific point. I saved the point value that I wanted to work with. And I also set a lowest value that was ridiculously high. In this case, it was um, 250,000, which is not the result. Uh, so what I could do then is actually see if I can find a path to this specific point with a lower value. So a lower value to reach this point. And I did that by first off setting the first point in the map to zero. That's the lowest value. There will never be anything at that point. So we start from zero and then we add up. So next point I wanted to get put in is that I take the point value of the left position or the right position of that, so number one in the sequence, and then uh, y uh, plus one. So this is pretty much a max x in this equation here. So I put the point values of those in, 
and then I set those into a list. Now I have my starting point here. So I take this my list and for this I created a new list, go through each point of my list, I take the x and y positions, the value that is the lowest in this specific point, I calculate north, south, west and east, so the different positions there, I check if the y value is uh, correct, I check if uh, the x value is correct and if so I can go either north, south, east or west in the map and if the point on let's say north here, the lowest value here is higher than the specific value that we had as a lowest point here plus the point value of the north is lower so if the, this value plus the point value of the lowest value here plus the point value of the next that I want to go to is lower than the lowest value that that point has then I will update that value set the new lowest value for it and then add that to a list because that's a new starting point where we, I might branch out somewhere else uh, and then I add all those to a new list this new list I put into my list again and I iterate over which means that I get all the val the lowest hanging points which has the lowest values and I'm trying to branch out from them going forward which means that I will get the shortest path to my destination the last thing I only need to check is the last part the last point in the whole map and see what the lowest value is there and I get this result so I was really happy about this solution. When I figured it out, I said, okay, I need to go up and implement this, see if I get something good. I get something good and I realized, okay, it's really late now, but I need to record this. So I, I'm really pumped and I'm not sure if I'm going to get to sleep after this or if I will be staying up for a while uh, more, but I hope that you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. Have you solved it in a different way? I'm very interested to hear about it. And I really hope to see you in the next video.